the yield right now, 2.5871. What kind of a move was this? Is it here to stay? It's getting to be significant because we're at near the lows of the calendar year right now. After the Fed backed off in January from all of their rate hikes, one would have thought if the economy was doing okay that you would have saw higher yields, and we have not seen that yet. And so we're back down at the lows of the yield. The yield curve is the narrowest it's been to pretty much throughout this whole move. And I think it's telling a message that's a little bit different than the stock market, where the stock market is rallying and trying to break out on the idea that things are getting better. The bond market might be saying, hold on a minute here. They might not, we're not talking about recession here, but we're saying, you know, they might not be as good as you think. So we're getting kind of mixed messages from the markets. So how do you read this morning's high frequency economic data then? Empire manufacturing, big disappointment. Industrial production, well, it was a disappointment, but, you know, maybe not as bad as the, what it looked at first glance. Jolts were better than forecast, so much more labor turnover. And Michigan sentiment was better than forecast. What's going on in this economy, Jim? Well, I think if you sum it up and you go back and remember that the tracking for Q1 GDP, either from the Atlanta Fed or the New York Federal Reserve, is pointing at a number of less than 1%, so a subpar quarter. And you've got more disappointments today than you had upside surprises. And that kind of fits with that, that the economy is just below average right now, kind of meandering along, at least in the first quarter. And there's few signs, at least right now, that it's getting ready to turn higher. Jim, sock Jen out with a note a little bit earlier on saying that the Bund is likely going to go to zero. Do you just keep buying German debt at this point in time? Well, it's not that far away from it right now. It's only a handful of basis points away. Uh, it wouldn't be surprising if it went through zero because it's done that before. The amount of negative yielding debt in Europe is rising. I think we're up to about $11 trillion again right now on it. But yeah, I think as the economy in Europe slows, Italy's in recession, the German economy is looking recession E, uh, that yeah, I think yields will continue down. And I don't think zero will provide any kind of impediment and they'll just keep going right through it. I want to. So I actually agree that there is going to be a negative yield for the U.S. I understand that Europe is going through this, but uh, my prediction is that if we do have a recession and uh, the U.S. wants to get out of their debt, they're going to inflate the debt. And I know we've gone down to a zero interest rate or the Fed cut the rates down to zero, but when that doesn't work, I do see the Federal Reserve going zero on uh, the interest rates. And uh, this is one reason as a real estate investor, I'm looking to buy property when that happens, because that means you can get fixed loans for under 3%, especially if you go with an uh, adjustable mortgage, you'll easily be able to borrow. Um, so I think if you're uh, someone that's interested in, this, in the housing market, I would wait to see if these rates will come down even lower than the previous historical lows, and it will be a great opportunity to buy. Um, it, these low yields are not good for crypto, so it's just convincing me that I'm going to have to sit longer on my crypto investments, and it's going to take a while before we see that $20,000 Bitcoin. But this should bring in inflation, and inflation should help raise the price of crypto assets. But let me know what you guys think about this, and I will talk to you soon.